Hi, this is Andy Mitchell. I'm a writer illustrator and I'm here today with Studio 5 and we're going to be talking about children's book illustration. We're going to talk about demystifying illustration as part of the children's book process. Uh, first we're going to talk about plussing the story and we'll tell you what that is. Then we're going to talk about storyboarding as an important part of the process of making a, the visuals for a children's book. And then lastly we're going to talk about the publishing team and how they work together. Next we're going to talk about storyboarding and how storyboarding applies to children's picture books. Uh, the process of storyboarding was invented by the Disney Studio back in the 20s, but this is something that applies to children's books as well, not just animated movies. Um, the storyboard process itself is breaking down the story into a series of images that tells your entire story. In the case of a picture book, each image is one page in that book. How is storyboarding used by a children's book illustrator? And storyboarding didn't, wasn't invented until about 1931 at uh, Disney Studios. I think a man named Webb Smith was the one who invented it. And, uh, but be even before that at Fleischer Studios, they were, uh, there was a rudimentary uh, storyboard system being set up because up to that point, all the animators were expected to, to have a little piece of the picture and do their own uh, gags. I think in each case, every single time I, I've done a children's book, uh, the storyboard for me has been sort of a way to find my way to, to finishing the story. It's, an essential, it's a, an essential tool for mapping out the trail through the woods. I think what's interesting about a good storyboard is that it, not only does it serve a roadmap for the artists themselves, but as Meryl and I have discovered on a recent project, um, it kept a, um, a, a, some difficulties in the project from kind of scuttling the ship because we did have a solid storyboard that we kept on and insisted on going back to. So not only did it stay a roadmap for the artist, it stayed a roadmap for the project. The storyboard, especially for Candy Palace, we looked at it almost like a piece of music because it had a rhythm to it. And then when you had all your little 32 squares out there, you could kind of tap along and say, this is like jazz, and here's your little quiet bits, and this builds up to a crescendo, and then the, the music kind of fades away. And it, to see it all there in one page is very useful. Yeah. What problems are solved by storyboarding your book? I think that, that you, you solve the problems of pacing and and composition page by page, and the flow of the of the picture book by storyboarding it. By seeing each spread page by page, you get an idea of how that how that story is going to read, how people are going to look from page to page, whether or not one page leads to another. So I think really it has to do with pacing, composition, and, and uh, overall look. A, a storyboard could just be little thumbnails, right? Like right. you should we organize could show thumbnails. Alice's. Yeah. Uh, thumbnails. They're yeah. just this big. Yeah. Or the series that you did for Candy Palace, where you had one big sheet and all of the spreads were right there on Lay one down. sheet. You yeah. can see visually exactly how the project was going to proceed. When you're working both in animation or on a kid's book, you know, if you know one person is late on their stage, it pushes everyone else out for that same amount of time and it really compounds. In animation, a good board enabled the layout man to not just start with scene one, then do scene two, and then do scene three. He would go from, uh, if scene one, re the background repeated in scene 28, he would go right to 28 and do that too. Does the storyboarding process change the story or the pacing of the story? Uh, in the book that Marilyn and I just did, The Candy Palace, I think that was a, a big part of what uh, we had to do. The story is kind of a non-stop. Uh, feel to it. It's like the it's like the last part of Speed, you know, where the bus just won't stop. <laughs> and um, uh, you have to find a few moments uh, to to stop and let the reader uh, take in what they've already just been through, and maybe switch them. You know, kind of throw the ball in a different direction. And Marilyn suggested, why don't we do some close-up stuff here? Why don't we break the story down into some panels so that they have to walk through these different panels? And uh, that will slow the reading pace down. And it'll kind of ease us into the end of the story. And I, you, you had thought through that with me before we even drew it, so. I was thinking that perhaps one way to slow down the reader is to have a lot of text on the page. 
It, <laughs> and, if want, and if you want to have a fast uh, pace, uh, just a very little text. Well, one of the things in Candy Palace that we came up with was the mom kept calling. And there was this little blurb, like a comic book, where the cell phone. And we only did it two or three times in the whole story. But it was almost like this little grace note that as this situation was getting out of control, the mom came in and that was our ticking time bomb that the mom was going to come back and as it was a great way to do it visually. It, it doesn't stop the story, it just paces the story in a different way. And it is a graphic novel technique to do what you're oh, talking yeah. about, to, uh, to add more panels to kind of um, slow down the reader. You know, you can do is use one long skinny panel to show something happening quickly because you read it quickly and you slow it down by all the breaks in the, in, in the images. I think what we're mostly talking about is only pacing. And I think the reason for that is because really, I don't think the storyboarding really does change the story, unless you're also the writer of the story. Once you get the story, you're not changing the writing of the story with the storyboard. Thanks, this was a lot of fun. I hope everybody got a lot out of this. I wanted to thank Studio 5 for helping me out with this today. I wanted to thank Write On Con for putting together this great event. And lastly, I wanted to let you know that you can find out more information about Studio 5 and see our illustration there at www.studio5art.org.